Have you ever wondered how to start running? Are you looking for a beginner's guide to running? Or perhaps you're curious about the benefits of running? If so, you're in the right place. Today, we will embark on an exciting exploration into the world of running. As we lace up our virtual running shoes, we'll shed light on the importance of setting goals and understanding your personal reasons for wanting to run. Whether it's to improve health, build stamina, or simply to enjoy the great outdoors, running offers a myriad of benefits. It's a journey that's as much about self-discovery as it is about physical endurance. So, whether you're a novice runner or someone looking to reignite an old passion, there's something in this guide for everyone. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to start running as a beginner, so, let's dive into it. Why do you want to run? Is it to lose weight, to get fit, or perhaps to complete a marathon? Knowing your why is the first step. Picture this. You're standing at the starting line of a race, heart pounding, adrenaline pumping. But you're not just there to run, you're there because you've set a goal. Goals you see are like signposts on a journey. They guide us, give us purpose, and provide a sense of direction. And in the world of running, they're absolutely crucial. Imagine trying to navigate a new city without a map. It's the same with running. Without goals, you're just running aimlessly, and it's easy to lose motivation and direction. But with clear, well-defined goals, you've got a roadmap to success. And here's the beauty of it. Your goals are uniquely yours. They can be as simple as wanting to run a mile without stopping, or as ambitious as completing a marathon. Maybe your goal is to lose weight, or perhaps it's to get fit. Whatever it is, it's important that it's meaningful to you. But setting a goal isn't enough. You need to make it smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. For instance, instead of saying, I want to get fit, a smart goal would be, I want to run for 30 minutes without stopping within the next three months. This way you know exactly what you're working towards and you can track your progress. Now don't be disheartened if you don't meet your goals immediately. Remember running is a journey, not a sprint. It's about persistence and resilience. It's about getting back up when you stumble and pushing through when things get tough. So before you lace up your running shoes, take a moment. Reflect on why you want to run. Define your goals. Write them down. Visualize them. Because these goals, they're not just signposts on your running journey. They're the fuel that will keep you going mile after mile. Remember, your why is your driving force. It's what gets you out of bed in the morning and pushes you to keep going. The key to running, especially for beginners, is to start slow. It's not about speed or distance, it's about consistency. Now you might be wondering, why start slow? Well, there's a simple and compelling reason. Starting slow allows your body to adapt to the new demands you're placing on it. Your muscles, joints, and even your heart and lungs need time to adjust to the rigors of running. Imagine if you were learning a new language. You wouldn't try to master the whole vocabulary in a single day, would you? Of course not. You'd start with a few words and phrases, then gradually add more as you become more comfortable. Running is the same. It's about building up gradually, not rushing headlong into something your body isn't ready for. But how slow is slow? There's a handy rule of thumb you can use. You should be able to hold a conversation while you're running. If you're gasping for breath and unable to talk, you're probably going too fast. Slow down. Remember, it's not a race at this stage. Now let's talk about progress. After you've got the hang of running at a comfortable pace, you can start to gradually increase your speed and distance. But remember, the key word here is gradually. A good rule of thumb is to increase your running distance by no more than 10% each week. This approach helps to prevent injuries and promotes long-term success. Finally, remember that consistency is your best friend when it comes to running. Try to make running a regular part of your routine. It doesn't matter if you're running for 5, 10, or 20 minutes at a time. What matters is that you're out there, putting one foot in front of the other day after day. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Consistency is key. So take it slow, be consistent, and before you know it, you'll be well on your way to becoming a seasoned runner. Now that you have your goals and a plan, let's talk about what to wear when running. The right gear can make all the difference between a comfortable run and a miserable one. So, let's start with the basics. Firstly, let's talk about dressing in layers. This is especially important if you're running in cooler weather. Start with a moisture-wicking base layer to keep you dry. Over that, add an insulating layer to keep you warm. And finally, a waterproof and wind-resistant outer layer to protect you from the elements. As you run and your body temperature increases, you can shed layers as needed. Now, moving on to our second point, the fabric of your clothes. 
Choosing moisture wicking fabrics can significantly enhance your comfort during your run. These materials work by pulling sweat away from your body, allowing it to evaporate quickly and keep you dry. So, say goodbye to the discomfort of sticky, sweaty clothes. Next, let's talk about shoes. The importance of wearing proper running shoes cannot be overstated. Your shoes should provide good cushioning to absorb the impact of your feet hitting the ground, support for your arches, and a comfortable fit. Remember, not all sneakers are running shoes, so invest in a pair specifically designed for running. Lastly, we must mention safety. If you're running during the day, don't forget to apply sunscreen. Protecting your skin from harmful UV rays is crucial. And if you're running at night or in low-light conditions, consider wearing reflective gear to ensure you are visible to drivers and others. To sum it all up, dressing appropriately for running not only enhances your performance but also ensures your safety. So take the time to invest in the right gear. It will pay off in the long run, pun intended. Before you start running, it's essential to warm up. But why is a warm-up so important? Well, let's dive into that. The first thing we need to understand is that our bodies are like machines. Just like you wouldn't drive a car hard without warming it up first, you shouldn't push your body to run without a proper warm-up. A good warm-up serves three main purposes. Firstly, it prepares your body for the physical activity to come. By gradually increasing your heart rate, it helps to pump nutrient-rich blood to your muscles. This preps them for the work they're about to do and can help to increase your performance during your run. Secondly, it increases your body's flexibility. Dynamic flexibility exercises such as leg swings, lunges, or arm circles are particularly effective. These exercises stretch and activate your muscles, allowing for a greater range of motion and reducing the risk of straining a muscle during your run. But perhaps the most important reason to warm up is to reduce the risk of injuries. Running is a high-impact exercise that puts a lot of strain on your joints and muscles. A warm-up helps to gradually prepare your body for this impact, reducing the risk of sprains, strains, and other injuries. So what does a good warm-up look like? It could be as simple as a brisk 5-10 to 10 minute walk followed by some dynamic flexibility exercises. The key is to start slow and gradually increase your intensity, preparing your body for the run ahead. Remember, every runner is unique, so you might need to experiment a bit to find what works best for you. But whatever you do, don't skip the warm-up. It's an incredibly important part of your running routine, and it's well worth the extra time. Never underestimate the power of a good warm-up. It's your body's best preparation for a run. So next time you lace up your running shoes, make sure to warm up first. Your body will thank you for it. So, there you have it. A beginner's guide to running. We've covered the importance of setting goals, the value of starting slow and progressing gradually, the ideal attire for your running adventures, and the significance of a good warm-up. But remember, every runner's journey is unique. Your experiences and strategies might differ from those we've discussed. Maybe you've discovered a different way to set your running goals, or perhaps you've stumbled upon a warm-up routine that works wonders for you. We'd love to hear about it. If you have any tips, strategies, or even questions swirling around your mind, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below. Your insights could be the guiding light for another budding runner. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and family. Stay healthy, stay happy.